because obviously Apple will never do that. Um, and just. To- Tuesday, 1st of November 2016, it's time now for episode 77 of the Lazy Couch Podcast. We're here to give you what you need to know about technology, gadgets, pop culture, and all things geeky. Broadcasting all the way from the TLC studios in Sydney, Australia, my name is Jeff Kim, and you got vined. My name is Kelvin Lee, and I won 10 bucks. Woo! 10 bucks, oh my god. Yeah, that is That is amazing. How did yeah. you do that? I uh, took part in a company sweepstakes. And yeah. uh, was given a horse called Heartbreak City, Ooh. and it came in second. Came in second. Yeah, and I still no won. heartbreak for you then. No, no. The race that stops a nation. Yeah. All right. Well, I might, I might just stop the, uh, the, the old, the, the new music. Yeah, the new music. Ooh, what do you think about that, guys? I, I, I kind of like it. Um, yes. But let us know what you think. It's a bit more upbeat. I, I don't think people can probably notice the difference. No, it's probably <laughs> just loud noise being blasted. It's the band. same band. Yeah. Okay, we yeah. might we might touch on that a bit later because yeah. uh, we're back actually. We've, yeah, we've had a pretty long break. I think this is the longest yeah, break. <laughs> I know we even had listeners complain to us today. Oh, yeah. Um, Listener, calling, yeah, calling us the really lazy couch podcast. Um, mm. So you know where have I been? Um, came back from Melbourne yesterday. Um, mm. That was fun. Um, it's nice to be around in Victoria. When how is Mexico these days? It, Mexico is pretty good. Yeah, um, you know they've got horses there, running stuff. Um, so yeah, no, it was really good. Um, mm. Took Qantas um, there and back, and something cool. I'm not sure if you know this, but they now don't actually have screens attached to the back of the headrest. Oh. It's an iPad stand. So A stand in, in without each, the iPad. Without the it? iPad, each pocket has an iPad. So what you do is. After it takes off, you take the iPad out of the pouch and you stick it to the stand. Right. And you charge with the USB thing on the side. Ah, but so there's cords everywhere? Yeah, there's a cord hanging out of this iPad mini. So it's an iPad mini. Um, These are on all flights? On, on Well, on the flight that I was on, okay. domestic. So you can't verify that. Okay. Yeah. So, but I took up my own iPad. Oh, wait. We do have a Qantas uh, listener. Really? Yeah. So uh, you know who you are. Give us, uh, let us know if this is a a new thing for Qantas. Yeah, I was really impressed. Does it come with free Wi-Fi? Yeah, well, yes, but the Wi-Fi only hooks up to the entertainment unit Qantas. on the plane, oh, so right. it's transmitting the okay. the uh, content via Wi-Fi. So it's, so it's a, an intranet. Yeah, it's an it's an intra Wi-Fi. Um, <laughs> it's the same app that you get via your any iOS device or Android device. Okay, but it's pre installed into this iPad. Mm-hmm. Now, here's the cool thing. So, obviously, I didn't want to use the iPad Mini because I have an iPad Air 2. Mm. So, it, the stand fits the iPad Air 2. Mm-hmm. But here's what I don't understand how it works. You know when there's an announcement and your typical entertainment unit stops and mm. it says announcement in progress? It yeah, does yeah. that. Mm. I don't know how. Mm. So, you, so even, with, even with my own iPad yeah. Air 2, um, so, I've opened up the Qantas app. I've hooked it up via the free Wi-Fi on the plane and it plays stuff like music. So, Okay, so headphones. Yes. So do you put plug it into the iP- iPad? Yes, iPad. Right. So there's no more little dangly things and is on it, the side. So when the announcement happens, is it like super loud like, like it was before? Yeah. yeah. Because that, that is, oh my God, like you're, you're like kind of half asleep on a yeah. long haul flight yeah. to Dubai or something and you're watching some movie like, in a, yeah. like you're not trying to make too much noise because everyone's asleep. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> this is Captain Charlie. We are 25,000 feet above the air. We're all going to die. <laughs> okay. But it was really cool. Mm. I thought it was a great concept. Um, not even a concept, really. It's a thing. Uh, right. It's happening. And yeah, it, it all worked out. I've got some photos on my camera, so I might share that on the okay. Facebook page to give everyone so a Qantas contact. is now a technology company. Well, now they save so much money by not building in these silly screens that you have to update all the time. All you do is change the iPad. They, they would have had to spend money on taking the units out. Yeah, I get that. But the long okay, term right, is okay. you can probably swap, swap <clears throat> these around. You can use okay. old ones. So hopefully in the future, maybe, you know, that they have actual Wi-Fi. Yeah, no, I'm quite sure it's anything. there. I'm quite sure it's there. They okay, just have right. to find a satellite connection and charge mm. you a bomb for it. Nice. Um, and the last interesting thing I did in Melbourne, which was uh, watch Doctor Strange. Mm, um, interesting, huh? Yeah. So uh, we'll talk about it 
shortly. I haven't、um, seen it yet, so、yeah. I, I haven't read any reviews. I feel like it's a bit 50 50, but、uh, I'm just trying to stay out of it.、Yeah. Um, so, yeah, maybe what next week are we gonna? Are there any events? Yeah, coming up, well,、uh, not that I can think of right now,、yeah, okay. um, unless you know we are Christmas party d up. But no,、uh, if you haven't watched it, go watch it. Tune in for the next episode so we can talk about it. And、mm. that was me. How, how, how are you? Oh, in the last month,、uh, one, one big、uh, life event happened to me. <laughs> life changing event. <laughs> yeah, I got the iPhone 7 Plus. Finally. The Jet Black. Jet Black. It's in front of me right here. Uh, it's, it's a beautiful piece of kit. Yep.、Um, everyone's asking me, you know, are you going to get a cover for this? Yeah. Why? Why would I get a cover for an iPhone? Seriously. I, I don't, because you might drop it. Just don't drop it. Hashtag,、yeah. okay? I think,、uh, yeah.、Um, we have one other listener that's,、uh, I think, kind of having an argument <laughs> with. Debate.、Um, debate? debate? Yeah, okay. Healthy debate. Twitter de- debate.、Um, Twitter debate.、Um, yes.、Yeah, so,、um, for some things that's so beautiful, you, you, you take special, special care with it, I think. So,、yeah. just don't drop it, hashtag. <laughs> yeah, and、uh, hashtag Apple Care. I might do a, a quick 30 second review. Yeah, go ahead.、Seven. Shoot、um, away. So, the best thing about it is actually, apart from the way it looks and feels, because it, on, in your hands, it is, it is quite beautiful.、Um, but apart from that, the camera. Because I've got the 7 Plus, so it's got the dual camera system,、um, the bokeh effect,、uh, also dubbed、uh, the portrait mode. <laughs> no, not, that's a nice. not as opposed to landscape mode, but portrait mode as in being able to take people photos with the bokeh. Bokeh? Bo- bokeh? Bo- bo- I don't know, bokeh. Okay, bokeh. But I, I hear people say it in several ways. The bokeh effect where it sort of picks up the, the face, it focuses on that. And then blurs out the background in real time. So,、um, I've been doing that.、Uh, you know, we had a big Melbourne Cup thing、uh, this afternoon at work and、uh, chatted out with a few people because they're all frocked up. And、um, it was pretty, pretty cool. Pretty cool. I- I'm loving the results. I know there was、uh, that first day when I got it, I was like just taking portraits everywhere. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, yes. I, I, yeah、um, we were all caught up in that. I'm, I'm thinking you don't need a professional photographer anymore for, <sighs> for any of your events. Wow. To all so, the photographers、um, listening, I am so sorry for what you just said. <laughs> Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. I mean,、yeah. the, the bokeh effect is something that you can usually only do with an SLR.、Um, It is a bit of a hack, but I think the results are really good for a, you know, for a smartphone.、Uh, what else?、Um, it's just super fast. So I've sort of gone, gone from a、um, 5S, which is three generations ago.、Um, so loving that. The gaming is、uh, the games that I play. I've, I've been getting back into.、Uh, Clash, oh shit.、Uh, <laughs> Clash of Clans, Clash Royale. No, the other one. The,、um, the Marvel. Boom Beach.、Uh, no, Champions. champions of, uh, Contest of Champions. <laughs> I always forget that word.、Yeah. Contest of Champions.、Yeah. Um, super smooth.、Yeah. Um, there's a lot more like, features as well.、Yeah. So I'm getting back into that.、Um, yeah, just loving it in every, every detail.、Um, battery life? Battery life is amazing. I could、yeah. probably go one day and maybe three quarters. Nice.、Uh, so, which is not quite. Couple of days, but I mean, if I, I only, you know, I had it at 100% as I left work, sorry, when I left home this morning, now it's at, just checking now, 70%. Wow. And, and it's、uh, 6 p.m. So, yeah, no, that's, that's amazing.、Mm. Um, does it charge really fast? Yeah, pretty quick, pretty quick.、Yeah. Um, so, I don't know about the milliamps, but、um, it probably does the, the usual thing where it charges up to 70% really quickly. Have you、uh, tested the waterproofing yet? Um, I haven't dropped it in the toilet.、Um, <laughs> I haven't taken a shower with it. I mean, did you see that new ad where、uh, it's, it's this, it's, it, shows, it shows this house and it's raining and it shows this hardcore cyclist and he sees the rain and he's、okay. like, I'm going to go for a ride. Right. And the new iPhone 7S ad. Where, where does he put the phone? Just in、uh, front of the. So he clips it with that quad lock that you have. Yeah, yeah, yeah.、Okay. Um, and he puts it、bike. there and he just goes for a ride. Okay. I'm like, But he's got a cover on that on, on top of that.、So. No, no, no. He,、oh, he sticks、direct. it direct、wow. with the quad lock.、Uh, have a look at the, at, at the ad. We might clip it on the show notes, but I thought that was a brave ad because there's going to be a lot of idiots trying to do that. Yeah, okay.、Um, so it looks like you can hold up. So that'd be、yeah. great. It does have a gorgeous screen, so I think even if it's raining and you're riding, you can probably see stuff,、mm. see the app,、uh, see, the, see the maps app. Yeah. No, no, the screen definitely does look great. It's so much brighter, it's so、mm. much bigger.、Um, yeah, no, it looks great. Yes. So that's a little bit of Apple, but we're going to talk more about Apple coming up.、Um, this episode is all about Microsoft versus Apple. Yeah, good. I think、it's、we've、back. probably had this battle a few times. <laughs> but now I think, our... it's, I think it's legitly back. 
Like, it's back, yeah? Yeah, I, I think Microsoft fell away for mm. a bit. They never had their own hardware. Um, you know, um, Apple fell away a bit because they never had the MacBook update. It's been like four years or something. Mm-hmm. God knows when they will le- release a new, you know, actual Mac Pro rather than a MacBook Pro. All right. So we're going to get right into that. So we, first, we're going to cover the Microsoft event. Yeah. Which actually happened last week. I think it was the day after the Apple event. Or was it the reverse order? Yeah, I wonder who, I wonder who announced it first. You know what I mean? Like, Not, I, No, sorry, sorry. You're right. Your, Microsoft was the first event yeah. on the Wednesday. But but did Apple know that Microsoft was doing that and vice versa? You know what I mean? Like, how is it so perfect? How did it not fall on the same day just to cause, like, mass media hysteria? Yeah, well, I mean, this is out of cycle for Apple to yeah. be because they haven't released a, a new Mac for a while. Yeah. It's been, what, four years for the MacBook Pro? Yeah. Um, and was so everyone knew before this event that Microsoft was going to come up with some sort of all-in-one computer. Everyone thought it was just going to be your typical all-in-one computer with a little computer, the screen sort of stuck at the back of the screen, things Mm. like that. But what we got, something else. So it's called the Surface Studio. Um, I didn't expect this at all. It's a large 28-inch pixel sense uh, Mm -hmm. display. It's huge. Um, I'm guessing it's a 4K screen. It can pump. It can pump out 13 and a half million pixels of color and clarity. So I'm taking a lot, a lot of this from Microsoft's website, and the the Good marketing. Place to get that info. The marketing speak is unbelievable. Is I it think, almost Apple esque? Yeah. No. Look at the website. It's, it's un- the greatest. Belie- it's unbelievably Apple display we've ever built. <laughs> Yeah. So let's talk a bit about what's in this thing. So it it looks, if you were to just look at it from afar, it just looks like a monitor. It doesn't look like the computer's anywhere because it's actually in the stand, which is pretty amazing. And what's beautiful about this little stand is there's only one cable coming out of it. Mm-hmm. Um, and obviously, is it Panos? Is that his name? Panel? Panos. Uh, oh, Panos. I forget his surname, but he's, uh, we, we sort of um, talked about him last year at the same yeah. event. He He's slightly kooky, isn't he? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I think in a good way. He's definitely a salesman. Yeah, yeah. He's Panos Panay. Uh, it's in P A N A Y. He is the head of devices at um, Microsoft. Mm-hmm. Um, so you know, he he presents it. He's really passionate about it. And then there's one point where he sort of leans on it because you can actually tilt it up to 20 degrees downward. So you you can almost put your arm to it, just like a like a drawing board. Um, and, and and what it does is the device has palm rejection. But he mm. had his whole elbow on. I think if he yeah. leaned any more, is about almost to... had his whole body weight leaning against yeah. it. Yeah, I don't know if I would ever do that to a no. three thousand dollar US. So device. if you're trying to picture this, think of an iMac, a huge iMac, a huge iMac, and we're yeah. actually recording this on a iMac from 2012, yeah. which I can't unlock with my Apple Watch, which I found out recently. What really? Yeah, with the new Sierra. Oh. Um, but anyway, like this tilts a little. I'm trying to demonstrate. So it tilts a little bit. Yeah, but you wouldn't rest Not your much. your yeah. hand on it. So, I mean, we're going to talk about that at the end of this uh, little section here. We're going to do a comparison with the iMac, the 27-inch, because it's 28-inch here. Mm-hmm. So back to the Surface Studio, what do we have here? We've got a choice of an i5 or an i7 Intel processor, um, up to 4 gigs of uh, NVIDIA GeForce GPU. I'm going to get to that in a second because this is key. Um, up to 32 gigs of RAM. Uh, you know, so it's pretty cool dimension wise. It's got four USB three. Uh, it's got an SD card reader, got a mini display port, got a headphone jack, which is a thing now. So I have to, you know, mention that. So quickly back to the GPU. This is where it gets a little uh, confusing. So because the base is quite small, the only GPU they can put in there is one developed for um, Laptops. Mm-hmm. So you get uh, a 965M uh, NVIDIA chipset or up to a 980M chipset. The current standard is now 10 something. So yeah. this is last generation's GPU. It's, it's almost like an iMac with a screen attached on a hinge, right? Pretty much. Oh, sorry, iMac mini, I yeah. should say. Yeah. So it's, it's not great mm. specs from a GPU perspective, but enough, you know what, 980M is still better than an Intel Iris or anything that's built in. Yeah. It's going to be good enough to pump out the resolution, which I'm just looking at right now. So it's 4,500 by 3,000, um, which is a very weird resolution. It's basically three mm, by two. Three by two. Most computers are 16 by nine. Mm-hmm. Um, and what that means is... It, it's like watching a movie, right? So you get the very short height and the very wide wides. So you're going to get a bit of a letterboxing effect when you're watching right. a movie on your screen. And what they want to achieve is, so you can actually look at, if you're a video creator, you can look at your video, which is 16 by 9, 
And then there's a little um, panel there, for example, where you use all your tools and stuff. So mm. that works out for them. Um, and obviously, it's going to be powered by Windows 10. Mm. So let's have a look at what else is um, new about this. Um, actually, before we do that, let's quickly look at the price. So it's, yeah, um, it starts at three thousand US dollars, which is about four thousand AUD. Not throwing in the usual inflation that happens over here. Mm. It goes up to four thousand two hundred USD, which is about five and a half thousand AUD. Uh, all up, you could spend up to six and a half thousand AUD after the usual, mm. you know, prices going up. So that's insane. Would you spend six and a half thousand dollars on a Gen One Microsoft device, no matter how cool it looks? Mm, um, no, not personally. Um, I, I feel like the, these are designed especially for creators in inverted commas, and we're going to talk about the new Windows update, and they're calling it the Creators Update. Yeah. So actually, we didn't play that video. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, Mac yeah. versus PC. I, I'll do that. I'll <laughs> that <in time. laughs> No. Um, yeah. So back in the day, Mac was considered the uh, the, the tool for uh, creative types, yeah. and PC Windows for boring office workers yeah. with Excel spreadsheets. But I guess they're trying to turn this on, on its head, and um, you know, I, I guess we'll cover this later. But I think they've been successful. Yeah. No, I totally agree. So one of the standout um, hardware announcements wasn't just the Surface Studio, but also the Surface Dial. So mm. the surface dial is like this big knob. Um, I know I shouldn't have said that, but you can take note. Um, so, so it looks, it reminds me of the volume buttons you get in your typical sort of amplifier. You know what I mean? Like your your amplifier that you have below your TV and things like that. So it looks like a big dial. It's quite a clicky dial from what I can tell. So what mm. you do with this is when you put it onto the Surface Studio or any Surface um, device on the screen, it picks it up and it gives you a not even a, like a secondary menu. So mm. if you're on, um, you know, paint, for example, you get to see all these different colors. Uh, if you're on, I don't know, what other, like Photoshop, you get to see all these different tools. It's almost like uh, when we tried the the, uh, the VR HTC Vive. Yeah. Um, with the left uh, remote, uh, not remote, but the controller, you're yeah. sort of like spinning spinning that to get the yeah. menu system, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. no, that was that, exactly like that. So mm. it's like a sub-menu within the menu when it picks up. And uh, uh, just, just to sort of uh, clear it up for some of the listeners, uh, when, when we say Surface, um, this is a line of hardware products that Microsoft over the last couple of years has been kind of pushing because Microsoft, you think of them as a you know software company, but they've been actually building their own hardware. Yeah. They're going fully Apple on this and... Um, you know, there's the uh, the Surface uh, notebooks, mm -hmm. which are well, the original Surfaces are kind of like iPads, but with uh, the very, keyboard, like a yeah, very plastic soft, keyboards. rubbery keyboard. And then they actually last year they introduced um, the Surface Book, which is with that sort of screen panel, but with a proper keyboard yep. that you can like take off as well. Yeah. Um, and this is the next level where. You know, you're, you're sort of like drawing, literally drawing. So back on the name, I was thinking the Surface. Can yeah. you remember when Microsoft bought Surface back in the day? No. Surface was a company. Actually, sorry. I should take that back. <laughs> what it was, they, they introduced a product called the Surface, which was an actual whole table. Yeah, the table. I remember the yeah, table. It was, it was ridiculous. called the Surface. Uh, yeah. And five years later, they, they sort of made this thing. Yeah. So yeah, every, every display is a touchscreen. And that, which is the opposite way of yeah. where, where other companies are going, namely Apple. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that that's a bit of background on Surface. And you know what? I'm using a HP Elite Book right now, and I'm using the touchscreen to sort of scroll up and down. Mm. Um, in our in our space, it's slightly unique because if I start using the keyboard or the mouse, it might create click noise or something like that. So it works for us. And you know what? I don't mind it. Initially, when I when yeah. I when I thought of how you know unnatural it might be by having a touchscreen on a laptop, I'm fine with it. Mm. Um, and we'll talk about that in a sec because obviously Apple will never do that. Um, mm. And just no. uh, okay, okay. Yeah. okay. Um, they might. Um, so so what else came with it? So like like you know like you were saying, they're not only a hardware company. Obviously, they are a software company. And the other huge part of it about this announcement is the creators update. Mm. So it's coming in spring, which is our March um, in 2017. Um, three key sort of themes came out of this. The first one is 3D, and the theme being 3D is for everyone. 
And we allow some... everyone to use 3D. <laughs> and it, I think, and we got to talk really slow. Yeah. So and use hand gestures. That's the thing we didn't get about the whole thing. Like everyone in Microsoft was talking like they were told to put commas everywhere. I just don't get it. Like that's, that's a new way, man. It's effective. Really? Is no, it is it targeting effective. like non English speaking countries? Is that oh, why kindergarten students maybe? Yeah. Is that why they have to talk like that? Anyway, mm. back to it. Um, how are they going to make three D for everyone? They're going to give an update to Paint. Um, wow, MS Paint. Everyone. MS Paint is back, everybody. Uh, for all the kids listening in, if you don't know what that is, oh, how do I explain this? It's it was like our Minecraft when we were kids. Uh-huh. Oh, that's yeah, that's a very good way of putting it. Yeah, it's like a Minecraft. So it was a very basic photo editing tool. In fact, it was almost a challenge to see what you could do at Microsoft Paint because of how limiting it was. Um, and back then, when we got Microsoft, uh, you know, installed into basically any uh, of our computers, it was all we had to play with. It was the only thing that was free. Uh, there was Minesweeper. Oh uh, yes, uh, Solitaire. Well, Solitaire. But this was more uh, like you know the yeah. only thing that really tapped into your creative side. Mm-hmm. So now you can drop anything 2D into uh, Paint 3D and it will turn them into 3D objects. Yeah, amazing. Uh, Yeah, Microsoft has also started a community called Remix where you can share your 3D images and also make 3D prints um, and get them sent to you. Mm. And they've uh, developed this app, like a phone app, where you can like scan real life objects. You just sort of spin around them, Mm. like 360, like full 360. You have to walk around uh, the object. And it scans it in 3D, yeah. which is kind of like, uh, what was that app that I used to use? I know, just Scene. Scene, yeah, S-E-E-N-E. Um, which uh, Snapchat bought. Yeah. And you don't, you sort of like do that uh, maybe, I don't know, like five degrees of the, the actual object. Yeah. Um, but this is like, if you wanted to get a specific thing to scan, you have to actually walk around 360 to do that. And you know how you were mentioning the Surface Line, how they have a tablet, a laptop, and mm. now they have a desktop. You think the phone is almost the next thing they need because well, they were, they were yeah. using a HP X3. I would imagine they've given up on the phone and they're going to rely on other, you know, Android yeah. and the iOS environment to, to push that uh, app out, I yeah. suppose. What a missed opportunity, though. Yeah. Um, yeah, so you can now 3D print. Oh, the other thing I realized, um, I was in Melbourne and I saw a lot of ads for Officeworks. You can now go into an Officeworks and get something 3D printed. Right. That's cool. I never knew you could do that. Uh, oh, okay. So you can walk in so with what? like a design or something oh, okay. uh, yeah. with a USB on a, on stick, a USB stick okay. put it in, and then click print. Yeah. I thought, like, what? And you now can... with the creator's update, Kelvin, what yeah. can you do? Well, a lot of that. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I think you can, whatever you scan with that phone app, yeah. you, can, you can 3D print that as well. Yes. So you can put that into your Microsoft Paint with your other images and create mm. a whole 3D... It's not an image. It's like a 3D... Scene. Rendering. Rendering, yeah, let's call it that. Yeah. The second thing is AR. Um, so uh, there, there is a new AR device. Um, their VR headsets will only cost 299 starting with HP, Lenovo, Dell, Acer, and Asus all uh, chipping in and building um, these headsets. So these are VR, though. VR yes, headsets. VR headsets. Yeah. Uh, which gets a bit confusing because the whole yeah. lens is AR. So they, they marketed this, uh, at least in the presentation, as a, uh, accessories for uh, HoloLens. Yeah. So I couldn't quite tell, like, do these things go over the HoloLens or is it like a separate headset it's, that you wear? It's not clear at the moment. Yeah. I think it's a simple... They might be able to do certain AR elements, but they're mainly VR mm. goggles. Yeah, and they're, they're being pretty vague, uh, f- you know, for that reason, because mm. they probably haven't figured that out. Yeah. Um, to me, you know, AI is a lot more exciting for them, especially Microsoft. Uh, HoloLens is, you know, they're, they're, they're in a unique situation. Like, no other company is really working on AR no. except Magic Leap, which uh, we know nothing about. Apple will buy <laughs> or Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, so that's really cool. Um, the third big thing is My People. Um, mm. What it is, is in your little Malaysians. toolbar. No. <laughs> oh. um, <laughs> the toolbar at the bottom will have little faces and you can drag files and documents, things like that. And you give you, it gives you the option to Skype them, email them, or message them using right. whatever you have on your tablet. Yeah. Um, nothing special, you know what I mean? It's like emailing people. Based. people. It's, like, it's, like, it's like a quick key to, to different faces uh, that you can send stuff. Mm. Um, emojis pop up. Um, now so instead of seeing like little blue dots or whatever an emoji actually pops up so it looks like you know when you hover across for those Mac users when you hover across your toolbar it sort of goes up and down Mm. it does that whenever the message comes through so it just 
you know, pops. Um, That's a bit gimmicky. That's probably not the, the, the most exciting thing about the creator's update. No. Um, I, th- I liken this to, you know, when Google Plus was kind of like, uh, I don't know, a thing. It's not yeah. a thing anymore, but yeah. like that, that's the way I sort of looked at Google Plus. Um, you know, like you sort of like base things or how, how you communicate with people via people first. So yeah. you sort of select the person and then you work out what you're going to use. And you know what? You, you, you always have to attribute circles back to Google Plus. You know, everything mm. that's around right now is, is really stemmed from Google yeah. Plus. Rest in peace, Google Plus. Um, what else came out of the um, hardware wise? You get a new keyboard. You also get a new mouse, but more importantly, you now get the ergonomic keyboard. Do you remember the keyboard like from the early 2000s, the Microsoft one that waved? Oh, yeah. It's not wireless. Okay. And someone wrote an entire article about how great that is. Of course is. they did. Um, so it's on the store right now. I'm looking at the Microsoft US store. I'm just going to figure out how much it is. You can pre-order it now. It is 130 US dollars. So it's got that arc um, slope that for those of you who have been around a long time, Mm -hmm. it looks like a big U thing. So Bluetooth 4. Okay. So it's Bluetooth. um, Especially for Studio or Surface Studio? No, you can use it anywhere. Anywhere. It looks great. It looks great. Mm. so yeah, so what? What I mean, how significant is this to Microsoft? Um, there was a great life hacker um, article titled, you know, the Surface Studio is just Microsoft's tipping point. You know, tip, basically, just talking about things you mentioned, Jeff, mm-hmm. um, and, and how they now have a complete arsenal. So they have a tablet, except for the phone, <laughs> except for the phone, which you know they have to figure out. They got to work out uh, some sort of home device as well. Yeah, Cortana, and, and that will come. You know what I mean. Mm. Like it or not, you know, they still have a lot of partnerships with Adobe and Autodesk, you know, that will all support the new Surface environment, which is great. Um, and you know what? The dial, it was out of nowhere. No one saw that coming in a million years. Um, and, and one of the things that, you know, Campbell Simpson, uh, Lifehacker, was talking about is he can see himself, you know, taking his photography and really using this and doing photo edits because it's so big and don't forget there's also the surface pen similar to apple's mm. pen apple yeah. pen I feel pencil like, uh, pencil i feel like singing that apple pen song now but let's not go there um so you, yeah pen. exactly so it's uh so you know you can just see it using the dial and just you know adjusting exposure contrast saturation all that it and it, it, it now is a thing. Who would have thought? You know, you yeah. wouldn't even have envisioned it. You know, years ago, using Windows to do your photography and your videography. Are you crazy? Hello, I'm a Mac. And I'm a PC. Ready to get started? Well, not quite. Got a lot to do. What's your big plan? I might uh, make a home movie or maybe create a website, try out my built-in camera. I can do it all right out of the box, so what about you? Well, uh, first I gotta download those new drivers and I gotta erase the trial software that came on my hard drive. Sweet. Then I've got a lot of manuals to read. You know, it sounds like you have a lot of stuff to do before you do any stuff, so I'm just gonna get started because I'm kind of excited. Let me know when you're ready. (laughs) Actually, the rest of me's in some other boxes, so I'll meet up with you later. But now, you know, Apple, I mean, Microsoft is making you ask that question, um, which is great. Um, and good news for them, it's sold out um, until early 2017, according to windowscentral.com. Um, yeah, um, I think uh, it's done a couple of things. So, um, you know, obviously they're trying to market it to designers and mm. creative types. I did send a tweet out uh, when I saw this. Yeah. Um, so I said, what did I say? Hey, designers, <laughs> are you now thinking about going to Microsoft? Hashtag Surface Dial. Yeah. I think even that dial alone, because uh, I don't know, if, did you mention that you can actually stick it onto the screen? Yeah, like, no, yeah, no, yeah, um, that's amazing. And you can do that uh, as well as just have it on the desk as well. So you sort of like have this sort of dial on the desk that you can kind of like play around with your left hand. You could do other things with your left hand, but let's not play that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so... Uh, ooh, I hope I can say this name. But anyway, Madalena Mack, uh, who is a designer. Actually, I think she's a co-founder of some company. Um, she said, actually, she said she's always been on Microsoft and Windows, um, but she's now using it even more for design. That's amazing because yeah. we know someone in the office who is a budding interior designer and she hates Mac for some reason. Mm-hmm. You know what? You, you can't, you can't, you know, I'm not going to. I think the tide is definitely turning there. Yeah. Um, 
it's going to happen. I think it's going to yeah. happen within our lifetimes. Yeah, of. I know. If you are a yeah. Android lover, Windows lover, who somehow works in the creative industry, like we know a few of those people. You know what I mean? They just won't buy an iPhone. Mm. They won't use a Mac unless their work forced them to. Yeah. Um, they now have an alternative. And I think there's there's a lot of bunch of people that um, probably in the 90s, they started out with Windows and Macs. Mm. And, you know, like uh, a lot a lot's been said about how Apple kind of changed the game when the iPod came out and people moved to Macs because they wanted to have everything integrated with their iPods yeah. and that sort of stuff. And that's when they changed to Apple. Yeah. Um, and, you know, they sort of went full on, fully on board with the uh, yeah, whole design thing. Now I think that they must be like thinking, okay, like what have I, what have we done with our lives? Let's, let's go mm. back to Microsoft because it's just, um, I think the second thing that it's done is like made Microsoft cool again. Yeah, and, right. and we said that in the last That's right. last years, even even last year, twelve months ago. Yeah, even the Surface Book is kind of yeah. cool, you know. Regardless of how you know great the devices and whatnot, it's, mm. it was cool. It was innovative, despite the the weird sort of bending. Mm. You know the Surface Book with yeah, that yeah, with a little the, hinge. Yeah, there. The it looked hinge. like a little book. Um, yeah, yeah. Someone made a really good uh, point. I saw an article, a random article somewhere, where it's now the hinge is slightly smaller. Oh, is it? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So uh, they also made an update to the Surface Book. You now get sixteen hours of battery life. Um, update in chips and stuff like that. Nothing really much to talk about. But hey, mm. if you still want to buy a laptop and you want a tablet as well, and you got and money to spend, yeah, four thousand five hundred bucks. Yeah, yeah why not? Do, do for it. a laptop. Do it. Um, yeah, and we're going to talk about that in a second. But um, on the creative section, Engadget also did exactly what you did and spoke to a couple of creatives. Okay. Um, one of the biggest uses for a creative is a Wacom. A Wacom tablet is an extremely precise tablet that um, designers and cartoonists and animators use to draw stuff. So um, one of what they, they spoke to Scott um, Coelho, which is a freelance, who is a freelance animator, and he uses the Wacom um, as well as the Surface Pro 4. And he, you know what he says? Like, you know, it's, he uses it when he doesn't have access to his uh, Wacom tablet. Mm. So that's pretty impressive. I mean, that's a good endorsement of it. Um, they also spoke to Hayden Scott Barron, who is a game designer, and he also uses a Surface Pro 4 connected to an external monitor instead of his iMac because yeah. he likes the pen. I don't know where they find these people, but they sound like pro Windows people. Mm. Um, but the, the comparison here is, can you replace the Wacom? Um, is what they're asking here. Um, and you know what? Um, I think what uh, Microsoft is going to do is um, I don't think the designers will get them for the home, but maybe, you know, because the certain companies are, you know, mostly on Microsoft anyway. Hmm. So, you know, and, and the design team or the design function is usually use, all using Mac. So maybe slowly that, that'll change and then, you know, may, maybe get the corporate world to, to buy in first and then, yeah, consumers yeah. will get them. And, and what they're saying here is the pencil is too simplistic. Mm -hmm. Um, while the Surface Pen offers more features, it still lacks support from a lot of the companies. Mm. Everyone just supports Wacom right now. Okay. Um, so which brings up another problem. What's Wacom doing? Because <laughs> they, they should be freaking out right now, right? Mm. Um, but no, they, they still do offer very targeted specific hardware that I have no like they now just um, running on what Max or Windows both, both so okay. that they have this little thing called the Express Key remote which acts like the dial right. so when you put it on a screen you can use it's like a little control with 17 buttons and, mm -hmm. a, and a touch ring for yep. you to do various tasks that replace keyboard mm -hmm. shortcuts um, so there is something called the Wacom Syntec which is a 27 inch display like imagine a large Wacom and it's been around for ages Right. So that's what the Surface Pro, I mean, the Surface Studio is going after. Not so much Mac, but also to get people thinking about it. All right. Do we have, do we have more on Microsoft here? I mean, there's, there's lots of stuff. Um, you know, I, I think they've done well with getting the creators, uh, designers uh, on board. Um, they're sort of starting to envision, like, true, like innovative stuff with the mm. dial. Um, it's, it's a brand new interface, if you think about it. It's not brand new, but it's... You know, I think they they got a big chance to popularize it. Yeah, and it, for me, I think the Surface Studio is sort of like the nexus of Microsoft. Mm. I think it's a to show other hardware manufacturers, like, hey, dudes, like this is how you create something innovative. This is how mm. you create something different. It's not going to be for you and I. It's not going to be for a lot of people. Um, the people who currently do Mac Pros and maybe the twenty-seven inch iMacs will probably consider this. Uh, who do a lot of work that in that space, um, but I want to see the trickle down effect. I want to cool. see slightly smaller versions of these. I want to see HP yeah. uh, and all those guys do something cheaper for the main masses. But this will change the um, all-in-one game. All right. So, Apple, what are you going to do? Let's see from Johnny Ive. 
The new MacBook Pro combines the fundamental qualities of an ultra-portable device with uncompromising performance. With our new design, the product's overall volume has been reduced dramatically. Mm, mm, dramatically. Volume. <laughs> Louder or softer? Yeah. Okay, different time of volume. Uh, all right, so uh, Apple had their event as well. Yes, the day, 24 hours after. 24 hours, basically, uh, in San Francisco, of course. Um, okay, so the MacBook Pro was the, the big thing, but they also had a sort of couple other things, including uh, a new website for accessibility. Yeah. I think uh, I think I've I've read a couple of uh, good reviews about it. Um, I think Apple is probably the best out of all these companies that are working on stuff like that. If you have a look at um, iPhone and the accessibility options, mm. it's very easy to do the voiceover. So I don't know if I showed you that. Well, yeah, no, you did. Yeah, so like um, you know, like we we work on websites, and uh, you know everything has to be responsive and um, viewable on a mobile phone, including you know people that are visually impaired. So. Mm. Um, you know, the, the best way to test that is to use the voiceover feature on iPhones. And if I'm not wrong, there is a certain section of the health app for wheelchair, uh, people who are, are wheelchair yeah. bound. I believe and even with the thing. Apple Watch, there's a, like when you set up, yeah. it actually asks you, are you, are you like in a wheelchair? wheelchair? I think, yeah. That's because it amazing. asks you to stand up every, you know, every so often. Oh, right. So it, for wheelchair people. Got you. I didn't uh, see that asked, angle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that would be awkward. Um, Anyway, so the, this website, I think it'll help with that sort of, even even for you know developers um, and uh, you know all those product people out there to be able to you know make sure that it's accessible for everyone. So I think that's a good thing. Um, they talked about Apple TV. Uh, they've got a new app called TV, which is going to um, come come to US only in December. Mm. Very vague in terms of what it does. Like, you know, is it just uh, your favorites? Yeah, like a quick intro into your favorite apps within Apple TV? Is it? I also think it's about the whole continuum thing, you know, Microsoft, where you can watch a video on your Xbox and then yeah. when you leave the house, you get to watch it on your phone. Yeah. I think that, that's. So I think they're just rebranding or rebadging the, the videos app. I, a video? You, you know, you've got a videos app on your iPhone. Did you know that? Uh, no. There is. I so I, I think that's going to be your TV. So that's your sort of in. Uh, towards that sort of TV experience or video mm. experience, not only from your Apple TV, but I guess you fire up the TV app. Anyway, very vague. But the main thing about uh, this event was for the MacBook Pro, mm. as Johnny Ive uh, alluded to. Um, yes, it's uh, it looks like a MacBook Pro. <laughs> Nothing's changed there. It's two fully sizes, metal. 13 inch and 15 inch. Yep. Two uh, colors. Yep. Uh, ooh, that, my uh, Mac is going to be crazy there. Um, Two colors, uh, space gray and gray. Uh, <laughs> silver. <laughs> now, uh, in terms of the way it looks from the outside, um, the biggest disappointment now is that the, the Apple logo doesn't glow anymore. I know. That's just, I, I don't know. Let's just not, not even talk about it. Drop the mic. Walk you can't out. even use that, uh, the Iron Man decal. No. Anymore. What's yeah. the point? I know. They could, they, they could have done it as well. You know what I mean? Do you think so? Yeah. It's just a light. Yeah. Like, just anyway, just humorous. All right. Probably the biggest feature um, for, for this model is the touch bar, Kelvin. Yeah. What can you tell us about the touch bar? So it was rumored like months ago that this is coming. Leaked? Yeah, leaked touch bar. Yeah. Um, so what do we know about the touch bar? It sits uh, where your escape key and function keys are. So the way Apple innovates is to take Hang something away. So the escape away. key is gone, right? Yeah, it's gone. But it's, the whole thing is um is a is a bar is a digital bar. That's right. But if you look at the uh, some of the images, some of the screenshots, uh, mm. the escape key is in in most of them. Oh, just so, so, it's so that a people, virtual escape. Yeah, just people don't freak out because uh, okay. apparently someone there was this parody you see all over Twitter. Someone made a USB escape key that you can plug in and it's, it's, so, a, <laughs> it's just an escape key. It's <laughs> um, hilarious, which I love. Yeah. Um, so it's it's like an LCD screen uh, that runs on top of where your function key is now mm. um, and it responds to the app you're in so which is amazing so if you are playing some music you can you know scroll a, um, back and forth between the song you can mm. do the volumes um, if you are in a video editing app you can you know scribe through the different shots um, and same with photography and the list goes on and on and on if you're playing a video it could act as a scrub yeah scrub for that example. was the word I was looking for yeah, yeah. Um, no, I mean, um, so the weird thing is there are th two 13-inch models. 
uh, one which was to replace the MacBook Air, which they explicitly said during the keynote, with no uh, touch bar, uh, which is confusing as hell. Why not just call it the MacBook Air? Um, so there is this whole thing happening online where people are discussing if this should be the MacBook Pro mm-hmm. because there is nothing different about it. You know, the MacBook Pro used to have an SD card. So if you're a photographer, you have access to it. So you've lost that. Um, but then you have the headphone jack here. But yet they took it yes. away from the iPhone. Mm. So if I have some lightning um, earphones, I can't listen, use it on this new MacBook. I'm so confused. You just bought an iPhone 7 Plus just like I did. What and are you, you going to do? You, you, well, and you had no other Apple device, I suppose, before that. You're kind of screwed because yeah, I, I need a lightning port to play that. On the flip side, it's another reason to buy the AirPods. Oh, I see where you Maybe going. that's what they were trying to do. Mm. So this is them being brave. But then don't even put the headphone jack then. Use True, USB-C yeah. um, headphones. But then they should have done that for the iPhone. You know what I mean? Like it, it, it almost feels like the left hand isn't talking to the right hand. And all they needed to do was just add like could a you, lightning could port. Could you charge the, uh, the notebook with the lightning port? Well, like argue- the way you can charge the iPhone, or arguably, it- yeah. Like to be honest, I don't see much of a difference between the Lightning port and USB C, and besides- it's smaller, so yeah. you know they're going to save on space. They should have just stuck with USB C on the iPhone. It would have solved yeah. them a whole bunch of. Um, the best head- thing would have been if they included all three kinds: oh, right? USB C, maybe USB two as yeah. well. So here's the other irony of this: you can't connect your iPhone, your brand new iPhone Seven S plus to the laptop because mm, it doesn't mm. come with a lightning to USB-C cable. Yeah. Which I don't think even exists. All right. Before I shoot myself in the so foot. So there's a lot of issues with this. Uh, I'm the, going the to thinking. Google a USB-C lightning <laughs> cable. Right. Yeah. You keep well, going. While you do that, <laughs> it does come with uh, four, count them, four Thunderbolt. Actually, I think for the 15-inch model only. Yeah. Um, 13-inch comes with two Thunderbolt. But these Thunderbolt uh, ports also act as USB-C ports where you can charge. Yes. Yeah. That's right. Now, the, the, the Thunder, I don't fully understand because I haven't used Thunderbolt for a while. Yeah. Um, Thunderbolt is generally used for what? To connect to screens. That's right. Um, so why would you need four of them? So um, it's 35 bucks, by the way, if you want to buy a bucks. USB-C to a lightning cable. And guess what? The only place you can buy them <laughs> if, is if Apple. If you had enough money to buy a MacBook Pro, yeah, what's, what's 35, 35 bucks? bucks? That's okay. Like, yeah. So Thunderbolt is just a fancy word for USB-C. Oh. That's, that's all it is. That's all it is. So you get four. You get to use any of it to charge your, mm. your new MacBook Pro. Um, but you're going to still have to buy dongles because it doesn't come in a HDMI port, which is the standard. So you have to buy a dongle for that. Mm. Um, and from all reports that I'm reading so far, a lot of these adapters are crap uh, because you're trying to do, make it do too much, Yeah, which is why they gave you four because the, the earlier MacBook only had one. Mm. So you had to build these massive devices right. and it would get overloaded. You know what the other thing is? So I think back in the day, I used to charge my iPhones from the laptop sometimes because they had a USB yeah. 2 or the old USB. Yeah, yeah, the old USB port. The the not reversible type. <laughs> Remember those old USB yeah, yeah. ports? Yeah, the, the So because like with the, um, even the Lightning, yeah. um, the, the other end is a USB. Yeah, but obviously right? this would have cost them money and they would uh, not have okay. made 35 bucks on this. Um, God, so confusing. It is really confusing. Right, I'm getting a Surface book right now. <laughs> so, I'm so mad. So, so but, 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 but just to round it up a bit, um, this, this is what Apple does. It's their thing. They mm. like to frustrate you <laughs> Um, by by really going all the way with certain things, right? It's them being courageous. It's their um, vision. Yeah, and and to be honest, like th- because you've been waiting four years for a MacBook Pro, a lot of people are still going to get it, and a lot of people will buy dongles. And the reason why they have four is so that you can cre- you can actually cre- buy these separate dongles rather than buying this one super device like the MacBook and watching it burn out. Mm. So it's a lot of, like, it can do a lot. Like, all your all your drives are going to be so much faster. You know, USB-C is running so much faster than USB 3 and things like that. Like, these are amazing devices. It, it's just that it would take, it, will, it ruins everything you have right now, mm. including the iPhone, which is what's frustrating about it. Yes, okay. So other than that, <laughs> I think we went a beautiful to a device. too, right? 
too fast. Okay. So, yeah. um, Let's talk anyway. about devices. What are they? What's in them? The, the laptops. Okay, right. So, um, you know, it's, it's a lot thinner than the usual or the old uh, MacBook Pros. Yes. So, you know, so I think the 15-inch model is up to like 20% thinner. Yeah. Um, less volume as well, as yep. uh, Sir Johnny alluded to. Yeah. Um, like you said, all the all those ports, uh, Thunderbolt as well as the headphone jack 3.5mm. Um, what else can we say? Keyboards. Uh, um, keyboard is ooh. a new, um, what do you call it, a butterfly What's yeah, it called? butterfly but, steps. Uh, uh, so it's not like a. It's like a, more like a chiclet keyboard now. So yeah, so um, you're the you're the keyboard guy. Yeah, I'm me. the keyboard guy. Yeah. Um, so very little travel in this keyboard. Ooh, uh, what does unlike, that mean? Unlike your typical keyboard where you can compress the key, mm. in order to make them seventeen percent smaller, um, they had to create a new mechanism underneath the keyboard. I believe they're called uh, for the life of me. I think they're called butterfly or scissors. Butterfly. Butterfly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, things. Um, so with butterfly this new, effect. <laughs> with this new butterfly mechanism, it gives you the perception of a travel while keeping it really, 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 really uh, thin. Yeah. Um, some people hate it, um, but if you might as well get used to it. Mm-hmm. And the other one is the trackpad is now twice as large. It's a um, trackpad. It's a great trackpad. Like I got got to be honest with you, my seven year old metal MacBook when it first came out and I was using that trap pack compared to anything else during that time, which rubbish, mm. but like I'm looking at my HP elite book right now and the trackpad's pretty good. Okay. Yes. Right? So, I mean, uh, the good thing about the, the trackpad on a, on a Mac as opposed to anything else that's uh, on one windows, I think is, um, I, I really can't use the trackpads by themselves. Mm. Um, so our laptops, yeah, yeah, yeah. Our laptops at work, they've got trackpads, right? I wouldn't yeah. know because I always use a mouse. Yeah. <laughs> um, cause I, I can't use that thing without a mouse. Wow. But with the, the Mac trackpads, and this is like a lot bigger than the, the ones that I'm used to, yeah. um, they're very usable, Yeah, I find anyway. And they're force touch as well. So different Ooh. pressure, um, it gives you different it menus. It works with Jedi's. Yeah, it works with Jedi's. Je- 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 <laughs> um, I, I, I love the trackpad. I think with gesture control and everything, you can do so much, mm. especially if you work on Mac all day long. I know a lot of our designers actually buy the separate trackpads right, from Apple. Yeah. And I, I used to know they a designer. don't need to do that anymore, right? And I know Dan the man. He actually had to buy a whole new keyboard and a whole new trackpad because the new ones came out and they wouldn't sit flush together. And this is what designers do, right? They can't have anything sit out in sync. Mm. Um, but no, Apple actually makes money out of people mm. loving their keyboards and loving their trackpads. Yeah. So this is no, um, no mistake. Now, um, let's go back to the touch bar a little bit here because um, I have a theory. Oh, and uh, I think he was saying that uh, Apple may never go back to go, go to touch screens. Um, I I think this is sort of their way of um, slowly introducing that. Mm. So look, um, they they almost invented the you know the multi touch displays right through the iPhones, and I I think they originally um, the iPods with the what is that the click wheel yeah that almost introduced the the general public on how how to sort of interact with devices that like that with your thumbs and your fingers um so yeah i think i think they actually headed that way they're just doing it slowly because maybe they're just being a bit careful so so, so you don't this- instead of reaching like you know you're typing on your keys and you're in, using your mouse uh, and all that and you know it's, it feels a bit awkward to sort of lean forward and touch mm. the screen this is sort of halfway there right See, what I was hoping they would do with the iPad Pro was mm. to replace the MacBook Pro. Oh, okay. So you buy your separate keyboard, you buy a stand, you buy mm. a trackpad, and you make it right. your new mobile working station. So I'm really confused where they're going with this, and we're going to talk about that in a second because apparently developers are kind of confused as well. Yeah. So let's just say they, the next iteration four years from now <laughs> is a touchscreen with the touch bar, your keyboard, your trackpad, and God knows, come on a VR goggle or something. I think I'd I'd go even further because I think it's possible that we'll just end up with two iPad Pros that kind of like collapse on each other. Like the clam. The Um, clam, yeah. So So exactly like the Lenovo Yoga. So no physical keyboard. Yeah. So the Yoga Book does that. So no physical keyboard. And the best thing about the Yoga Book from Lenovo, check it out, is the bottom bit is approved Mm -hmm. by Wacom. Ooh. So it's actually Wacom. Um, so compatible. I think that's definitely the future. Like whether Apple will go there, yeah. I think maybe this this will um, test that sort of uh, market out. Yeah, because like it or not, developers are going to have to develop for the Touch Bar because mm. it is unique to every. App. You're going to need some sort of like so. So the uh, was it the yoga thing? Yoga tablet. Yoga the tablet. book. Sorry, yoga book. Yoga, yoga book. Yoga book. Yoga book. Uh, can can it do a downward dog? Anyway, um, <laughs> does it have any sort of haptic feedback there? Yes. Like 
So you can tell, like, can you touch type? Yeah, uh, they're saying it's about the, most people have tried to have mistakes and stuff, but you get used mm. to it. It's like it's like it's like typing on your iPad. It's not going to mm. be great, um, but that's the future. You, yeah, you can't quite get to that level of um, no touch typing though. Right? But I'm hoping that with all these new innovative ways of trying to replace the keyboard, which Apple have done here, is maybe you won't need to type as much. Maybe you can do voice command. It's a I mix. think that's where everyone wants to get to. But like in reality, I just can't see it happening. No. Like, uh, what are, what are devs going to do? They're going to talk. <laughs> talk to the machines no, i think there will always be a niche like scenario of, yeah. of that um but or like you know computer languages or like languages are getting so um yeah. i don't know mature these days it's a is it just simple drag and drop to to you know yeah develop things now i still think there will always be a need for a keyboard mm. uh, but not for your average joe is not going to need a keyboard yeah. Mm. Uh, which is the masses, right? Okay. Yeah. Um, so let's talk a bit about what's so unique about this touch bar. Um, it actually comes with its own processor. And it comes Ooh. from a processor made from ARM, um, which was, oh God, it was bought recently for Squillian. Oh, it was a uh, Japanese tech... tech uh, uh, SoftBank. SoftBank, yes. SoftBank bought ARM for yeah. $20 billion. Yeah. Um, so it now ships with two processors. Um, the main processor, the Intel one, uh, i5, i7, etc. Um, and the ARM one. So um, it's called a T1. Um, it's the same chip inside your watch, mm. the Series 2. All right. So what you basically have on your uh, new MacBook Pro is a watch. So there it's the go. same chip. Uh, which a watch is amazing. unfurled. Yeah, which is great. Um, so yeah, unfold it and you get, get that. Um, oh, hang on. Does that mean they're going to make the strap into a... Oh, maybe Ooh. one day. Okay, one day. So the touch bar actually runs a lean modified version of watchOS, which is why go. it needs a T1 to run it and send data and render images, which is really smart when you're from an efficiency perspective because if you design your operating system around a chip, mm-hmm. you might as well just put it in the laptop. Um, so that's a really cool bit. Um, so you basically have an, so what you're getting from the MacBook Pro is an Apple Watch as a touch bar. Wow, Watch. that's uh, $570 thrown in to your MacBook Pro. Hey, for free. <laughs> yeah, so you can take, take the touch bar off and just wear it around your wrist. <laughs> or just carry your laptop <laughs> like a touch bar. What time is it? Well, let me check. Um, mm. Yeah. All right. Um, there's also some guidelines that Apple have uh, put out for the touch bar because it is uh, it does have an open API, I believe. Mm. Um, so devs can uh, work um, with those, I suppose. That they, they have to now not only develop for the screen, but now the touch bar. Is that yeah. correct? Yes. I think I've sort of interpreted that correctly. So what are the guidelines? Um, number one, use the touch bar as an extension of the keyboard and trackpad, not as a display. They really don't like you touching the screen. <laughs> like Johnny would rather die. It's, is it the touch. fingerprints? It must drive him insane. Yeah. <laughs> I bet he doesn't have Actually, an iPhone. I, I, did, I forgot to uh, mention this in my... Um, iPhone review, iPhone 7 oh, Plus yeah. review. So this this is actually, because people are laughing at me because of the jet black and yeah. it's a bit shiny yeah. and it kind of looks like I've got some cheap cover on it. <laughs> it actually does. It does not. <laughs> I'm kidding. So this, this is uh, actually the Johnny iPhone. Yeah. The Ive phone. It's yeah. hard to say. Um, this is the phone that he wanted to make. Yeah. So imagine if, if, if you want to take this into, how, how would you represent this beautiful thing, black slab of beauty yeah. into a laptop? That, that would be Johnny's vision. Yeah. Anyway, I just want to no, say no, that. No, and, and you, you just did something, and I think I can see why he did it, because now the back is as glossy as the front. That's right. He always wanted the blacks to, to sort of blend in. And uh, our old friend Nathan, if he's listening yeah. in still, um, we talked about this at length uh, when we used to talk about Apple events. Yeah. So he, he wanted, Johnny Ive wanted, uh, we used to talk about Johnny Ive wanting that sort of the bezel to blend in with yeah. the, the blackness of the screen oh. completely. So it's, it's almost yeah. like reversible now, so you can't really tell. Yeah, which I've got a feeling the, the the next thing they're going to get rid of is the button, the home button. Uh, they almost did that. Yeah, it's almost. not a physical button anymore. Yeah, they'll get rid of it. Anyway, where were we? <laughs> uh, the guidelines of the touch bar. Um, the, yeah, there's a few of these. The next one: touch bar shouldn't display alerts, messages, scrolling content. Uh, looking at you, Samsung. Static content or anything else that commands the user's attention or distracts from their work on the main screen. Okay, that's quite specific. Yeah, um, no, no, like so what, no yeah. messages, basically. So if you get an alert, um, you've got a new Twitter reply or something like no. that. It shouldn't appear there. The screen is designed to display okay. stuff. You're meant to interact with the touch bar to it, do stuff. Okay. So are they? Is it? 
is it going to be um, when when Apple uh, on the App Store when they um, approve apps, they'll be approving this sort of stuff, right? Well, it's but what if it's yeah guidelines? <laughs> guidelines, okay. <laughs> Uh, what else is there? Uh, avoid animation, really? Yeah. How can you avoid animation? It's I think it, like don't play a video in there. <laughs> <laughs> um, although you can have emojis there, you yeah. can select emojis. Weird. I, I guess that's part of the keyboard. Uh, use color tastefully and minimally. In general, the touch bar should be similar in appearance to the physical keyboard. Yeah, tastefully. Um, now that Steve Jobs isn't there, I don't mm. know. That that's a bit bit of a mood point. Yeah. Um, in general, the touch bar shouldn't include controls for tasks such as find, select all, deselect, copy, cut, paste, undo, all the right click buttons, basically. Yeah. Um, control really? anything. Yeah. So I think they don't want you to replace like the Control V, Control C, you know, or Command C, Command V. Yeah. Um, because it's there. Right, so what can you do with the touch bar? So it's meant to be an extension, so it's meant yeah. to replace the function keys. So they want but you to... To me, th- those functions are part of, you know, like yeah. commands, right? So, But let's play it out a bit. Like, why okay. are they doing this? So I think you're right. I think the next version of the MacBook or the MacBook Pro will probably not have a keyboard, right? Because they want you... To, they, I, 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 I think the keyboard pisses Johnny off. But they're going to have this sort of guidelines as well for that? That, that'll be completely waste yeah. of time. But I think they want you to move away from... Um, they, they want you to think about this one, the third way of interacting, mm. or in, in providing input into the display. This is not so much like a notification bar or anything like that. This is about adding an extra layer of complexity. Because one of the things, you, if you look at your Xbox controller or your PS controller, there are more buttons there than you can think mm. of, right? Like clickety things and everything. But we're used to it because we can multitask. So it's almost like we're stuck in the Middle Ages if we have a trackpad and a keyboard and a trackpad and a keyboard. So now they've, they've added a third input field, mm. and that should be what it is. Like, this is a gateway drug. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I can't think So I think they can go either way. They can like make the, the bottom part of the laptop yeah. into a whole screen, or they can make the screen itself touchable. Which they've um, chosen not to. Yes, but I think this is that, that halfway point, right? Yeah. So it's not, they're not going all in on yeah. either. So it'll be interesting what they do. Maybe this is a, just a way to find out what people like. Yeah, because um, there is a Razer computer where there's a little, the touch pad on the right-hand side hmm. becomes a screen depending on the game you're playing. Yeah, that's right. Um, so so that, that's kind yeah. of, you know. The touch, uh, the touch bar also comes with a touch ID. Yes, I thought yes. that was really cool. Mm. Uh, so you can unlock your computer using your touch ID. Um, you can do your Apple Pay, I suppose. That's um, right. Without, so right now with the Sierra update, you can use Apple Pay as long as you have Apple Pay on your phone. And you have to use your Touch ID on your phone to authenticate, but you can now do it without the phone, I suppose. Yeah. Um, what else? What else? Where, do we, where else do we want to go? Yeah, so um, I, there's a great article in Medium.com by a freelancer known as Owen Williams. And uh, mm. one of his, the topic of his article is Apple just told the world that has no idea who the Mac is for. And uh, he sort of had a couple of questions that we spoke about. Uh, like, number one, why can't I plug the lightning headphones that comes into the iPhone <laughs> into my new Mac? Why doesn't the iPhone come with the right cable for the new MacBook Pro? Why doesn't Apple make a screen that works properly with its own devices? Why did Apple highlight how great the touch bar is for messaging, but doesn't even port most of the new iMessage features to the Mac OS properly? Why do I have to carry two pairs of headphones now? How do I charge my cable, my lightning cable mouse? Is it a lightning cable mouse? Probably is. Um, why remove the HDMI port? Why remove the SD card slot for creatives using, you know, cameras? Um, yeah, they're, they're forcing people to do certain things, and I think people just react badly to that. Mm, there's also a great post that I saw with uh, a review from Benjamin Button. <laughs> so if you don't know who Benjamin Button is, he was uh, a character yep. in a uh, uh, Brad Pitt movie. Yes. Brad Pitt played him, right? Um, and it was directed by uh, David Fincher, one of my favorite directors. Really great movie, but basically the, the, you know, the, the movie is uh, Benjamin Button is born old. Mm. And then he progressively gets younger. Yeah. That's pretty much it. So, yeah, think of that. And uh, so the review sort of reads from his point of view. So, you know, it's like the MacBook Pro is kind of going backwards. It's removing a lot of things that were useful at the time. Yeah. Uh, now, you know, they now it's being put back in. Yeah. So, he's getting... Yeah. It would be hilarious if we ever get back to that. Yes. So, 
Um, why did we compare the Surface Studio, a all-in-one desktop, with a laptop that Apple mm. produced? It's because they're both at the same point in time, and it shows you where each company is going, which yeah. I think is key. So Business Insider uh, Australia had an article uh, where, in terms of innovation, they believe <laughs> that Microsoft has upstaged Apple uh, for a number of reasons. The title of this article is, you know, Apple is stalling for time with its new MacBooks, and Microsoft yep. is fully aware of that. I'm there, I'm there. I'm with your Business Insider. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and, and, you know, one of the things they spoke about is... The thing that's making money now for Apple is iPhones, and they will continue to do a lot of R&D with that, which neglects the less of their product line. Yeah. Uh, and they're also, you know, we all, we've also heard about how their car project has, you know, needed a bit of a reboot. So they lost a bit of time and money there. And there's only that many people you can hire to do these things. Um, mm-hmm. And like it or not, there's a story that's going around where this is the first time in 15 years where Apple is losing money. That's right. Or not yeah. making a profit as big as something. Um so, so yeah, the year-over-year revenue is, 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 is decreasing and they really need to focus on the iPhone. Um, right. So what do you think about this whole... So this, yeah, I think I'm totally on board with that. Like this is a pivotal point where, you know, even from a PR point of view where, you know, like for a long time, you know, I would say 20 years, uh, Windows or Microsoft has been a bit of a... I don't know, a bit of, not, not a laughing stock. That's that's being a bit too harsh. Harsh, I think. But um, you know, there's certain certain uh, parts of the population, mostly the creative types, just stayed away from it just because of the brand, right? Mm. They, they weren't even willing to try try the brand. Yeah. Even they 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 may have heard about some of the good features, mm. but it's yeah, but it's it's Microsoft. Though. Why would I go there? Uh, or it's not Apple. So Apple has had bit, had has had that PR with them, um, good PR that is. Um, and I think this is that t- point in time where, you know, we've seen Microsoft sort of getting there, but this is the cross moment. Yeah. Um, so I think, you know, 12 months from now, um, I think it'll, the landscape would have totally changed. And I agree. And I think Windows 10 is part of that argument as well. Mm. I think it's good. I use it daily. It's fine. Uh, I use Windows 8 daily at the work and it's fine. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, and you know when when they released uh, when Apple released the iPad Pro, Tim Cook was pitching it as a laptop replacement. Yeah, so and is it is it also the sign of the times where just you know technology is moving a lot faster? Like um, you know, say ten years ago, Apple would have done things a lot quicker. Yeah, it, it's pretty much Apple versus everyone, isn't it? Because you know Google is competing with them for you know AI and. Mm. The assistant, um, you've got Microsoft competing with them in terms of hardware. Who else is there? There's uh, Samsung is doing that as well. Yeah. Um, Amazon, there's Amazon that they're competing with. Yeah, you so got people things. like Xiaomi, you know, who just released a beautiful phone. Yeah, called and the, the way Max. Apple operate, they sort of like sit on things for a while, see what sticks to the wall, um, and they go for that, you know, that that next big thing. Mm. But because there are so many competitors, are uh, I guess they've kind of caught up in terms of uh, innovation and just just yeah. you know, way way to move forward. I think they're just uh, running out of time here, and so this the, the way you know Business Insider is like describing them as stalling. I think is perfect. Yeah, if you look at the website for Surface, it looks exactly like the Apple website. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this is this is what happens. Apple has done things the right way for a very long time, and everyone's just mimicking it. It's just what it is. Um, I mean, it's Apple does incumbent. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Apple doesn't really have a strategy or, or a known strategy to us mere mortals about what their mm-hmm. AR approach is. Yep. So basically, the, the theme is you know for the last twelve months on the podcast we've been talking about how Apple is slowly falling, but I think we've reached that time. I think this is that point in time, Kelvin, where yeah. it's officially dropped below yeah. Microsoft. Yeah, no, and uh, I'm going to call it. That. Let's call it. Let's call it. Yeah, let's call it. I, I think they're finally competitive. I think I you know Google. Microsoft, Apple are all going to compete. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't wait for Google to actually release a desktop with some sort of Chrome OS type device. They already have laptops, and it's slowly creeping past. Um, You're going to get to that the initial post Jobs era where after you left, you know, they, they had a very focused, you know, line of products, but then they sort of diverge into very different things. Mm. I think what Apple's going to do is like, okay, we need to catch up with Amazon. We're going to catch up with Tesla, Solar City, and all those companies, and just like put out a bunch of products. Yeah. And I think they're going to fail there, obviously, if they do that, because Apple's, yeah. it's not in their DNA to do that. 
No, I mean, look at all the competing laptops just alone for the MacBook Air. You've got the Elite mm. Book, you've got the XPX 13 from Dell. Like, they've lost the MacBook Air market, right? That's gone. Mm. Like, the whole Ultrabook thing is done. So they're losing market share there as well. So it's phones. They, mm. they're gonna, anything they come up with right now is going to just make the iPhone better because they still have an unsaleable... Are they, are they still working on a new TV? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. All right, so um, if, uh, if you have shares in apple what would you do right now i would sell, sell, a, sell, sell. a few of them and buy some microsoft shares and maybe there some google go. shares Di- diversify basically no one knows <laughs> diversify sell 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 um <laughs> no so that's it uh, i think we called it i think microsoft is the cooler company right now if you disagree with us you know you can tell yell at us on twitter at the lazy couch in caps please in caps with hashtags angry ones or you can yell at us one-to-one on uh email uh, the lazy couch podcast at gmail.com or yell at us on facebook or yell at us on instagram just by searching the lazy couch podcast or go to the website where you, you can yell at it if you want you won't get a response you can yell publicly yeah yell publicly as well um check out the lazy oh, chris chris uh, wrote a comment and we still haven't gotten back to it i, I, I need to oh, test God. that functionality out um okay. and if you're listening us to itunes or anything that allows you to rate us please do i'm sure you enjoyed some parts of this today uh five stars kill that jeff out I'm a Mac. And I'm a PC. You know, we use a lot of the same kinds of programs. Yeah, like Microsoft Office. But uh, we retain a lot of what makes us us. But you should see what this guy can do with a spreadsheet. It's insane. <laughs> oh, shucks. Yeah, and he knows that I'm better at life stuff, like music, pictures, movies, stuff like that. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What, what, what exactly do you mean by better? By better, I mean making a website or photo book is easy for me, and for you, it's not. Oh, oh that kind of better. Yeah. I, I was thinking of the other kind. What other kind? Hello, I'm a Mac. And I'm a PC. Oh, hey, iPod, nice. Yeah, it's just a little something to hold my slow jams. <laughs> oh, yeah? Yeah, and it works so seamlessly with iTunes. You should check out iMovie, iPhoto, iWeb, because they all work like iTunes. You know, oh. iLife comes on every Mac. iLife. Well, I, I have some very cool apps that are bundled with, with me. Well, like, what do you, what do you got? Pff, calculator. That's yeah. cool. Mm-hmm. Anything else? Clock. A cl- clock. Sounds like, sounds yep. like hours of fun. Yep. Or at least uh, minutes. Hello, I'm a Mac. And I'm a PC. We've got a little network going here, and uh, it was very easy to set up. We speak each other's language. We share our internet connection. There are all sorts of things we do together. Who now, who's this now? What's... Oh, going? this is that new digital camera from Japan. Just came out. Hajimemashite. Uh, Hajimemashite. Yoroshiku onegashimasu. Wait, 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 wait. You speak her language? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Everything just kind of works with a Mac. Uh, ah, uh, arigato. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, so. <laughs> Buongiorno. Hello.